to say about that. Final boss is your own brain. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hmm? No, I'm, I'm good. I was just messing around. Whatever. Oh, hey, how's it going? Uh, thanks for coming out, everybody. Uh, so if uh, people don't know, this is Jeremy Penner, a.k.a. Spinley Q, and he's going to be interviewed, or it's going to be more of like a conversation between uh, Jeremy and Maddie Bryce. Uh, so, yeah, come on up to the stage. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Jeremy. There you go. We're official out. Yeah. So, hi everyone. Um, I'm Maddie Rice. Um, I'm guessing you all have already been introduced. Um, so I'll just like quickly introduce myself. Um, I feel like the reason why I was asked to do this was because I am also interested in DIY video games, um, and I feel like that is kind of um, an interesting touchstone to kind of return to, um, maybe given uh, the length of time that happened between when I started making DIY video games and when you started making DIY video games, um, and kind of today and maybe the importance of like all the really crappy video games that we made, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, which are for some reason like cultural touchstones. So like it's interesting to think about um, that, that legacy. So. Um, so yeah, I, I was actually kind of curious when you were just speaking about like, you know, feeling ins more inspired by like the bad, mm. you, you know, the bad games yeah. and like how much we've spent most of our time playing bad video games more than we've been playing good video games. And mm. I was kind of curious as to like, like why do you think that is or what leaves impression, what, what kind of leaves creative impressions on you? I think th there, there's a few things. Um, one thing is just that it's it's more accessible. Like a bad mm -hmm. game is is easier to imagine myself having made, right? Mm -hmm. um, or like having being able to make something like it with whatever tools I have, whatever my level of experience is. Um, and so like I think that's that's really important. Um, I think one of the things with Glorious Trainwrecks that kind of happened when we just like make bad games, like literally <laughs> like don't even do not try to make a good game. Make like make mm -hmm. bad games. Um, is that people really felt free to make whatever they felt like making. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a huge range of expression uh, from the community and like what, what people have made um, as kind of inspired by that. Um, when there's not this pressure of like, you know, um, if, if I don't live up to this thing, then it's not worth doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think also just like, you can just be a lot more, they, a, a bad game also kind of often just takes more risks. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's just kind of more ideas that you just don't see normally. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, they put them in this thing and it didn't work maybe the way they wanted or the way they expected, but it's still there. You can still play it and you can be like, oh, you might see a kernel of an idea in there or you might just, you know, have never played something like that before mm -hmm. because most of the things that you, you know, most of the games that you might encounter if you're not kind of digging, um, you know, it's going to have all the rough edges sanded off. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah. No, I, I kind of, I was definitely connecting to you when, um, like, I also have, like, a really bad, like, perfectionist side of myself mm -hmm. and I think game design is the worst profession to go into if you have one of those sites. Yeah. Um, but then I think people are also very, very surprised when, whenever they ask me, like, especially people who are not familiar with games, um, like, how long does it take to make one of your games? I'm like, I've never spent more than a week on a game. Mm -hmm. And that, like, really upsets a lot of people. Like, yeah. what do you mean you don't, like, you spend, like, labor, like, months over your work? And because it doesn't, like, it just pops out of my head in a weekend and I'm done. Yeah. You know? And so I think there's, like, something about what, what you're saying of, like, the risk, like there's almost like this point in time in the game development process where you like kill your creativity in yeah. order to make something good. Definitely. So like, w yeah, I w can you like speak a little bit more to like that tension? Yeah, sure. Like one of the things that um, we did early on in Glorious Trainwrecks was uh, the Click of the Month Club. 
um, which is this two-hour game jam, which was really, uh, the whole idea was not like, you know, with a game jam normally is, you know, you know, hunker down and make something and kind of this, it can get into like glorification of crunch and all that right. sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea was we had such a s small time limit that, you know, you could find two hours, right? Mm -hmm. um, hopefully. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe not everybody can, but um, if you can find two hours and you can, you know, have a tool, you know, early on it was it was click and play, mm -hmm. um, but there are other things that people are, are maybe more comfortable with now. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you have a tool, if you have the tools and you, you just carve out a little space and it's just like, at the end of those two hours, you can be done, mm -hmm. and you can have something, and you have this art. You, you have this, You've created this thing that doesn't exist before, um, and that can show you something, or it can just be like, "Oh, I did this thing, and mm -hmm. it's not what I wanted." Or you you really don't know at the start what's necessarily going to come out the other end. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so this kind of the idea was to kind of take something really, you know, constrained and small and to kind of, the idea being like, you can't be a perfectionist in two hours either, right? right? Like you're getting, <laughs> trying to, the, the, the whole goal of the site kind of once I, once we started honing in on like uh, the Click the Month Club and, and other things like that was like, um, just trying to get out of your own way and mm -hmm. like remove any kind of roadblocks to, to making something. And it's like, because if it's like, oh, it seem, if making a game seems like this really big thing that you're going to have to take all this time to polish and it's going to be a big production, then you, just, you probably just won't start. Um, but if it's like, okay, I'm going to sit down for two hours and then it, whatever I have at the end is going to be, you know, I'm going to upload it to the website and people are going to play it and, you know, there will be some back and forth. And um, that worked really well for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just like, you know, people getting helping people kind of get out of their way. And I mean, the other thing about Click of the Month uh, that kind of emerged was uh, the idea of, like, if there's a rule that's getting, like, you know, if the two-hour time limit is too tight or whatever, you know, if there's, um, or, or there's a theme that you don't like or whatever, the, uh, the whole point was was removing those roadblocks. So the, there's a, a motto in Glorious Trainwrecks, which is cheating is encouraged. <laughs> yeah. So, like, any rule that's in your way, like, that's, that's not a good rule if it doesn't work for you. Um, so I was kind of trying to help, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if people didn't have that particular roadblock of, of perfectionism or whatever, and maybe they had something else, like, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully we can find some way to support them as well. Yeah, I've really, um, yeah, I have like a, some divergent thoughts, but like, you know, um, I think when people think about games, and especially people who have been playing games for most of their life, they like can't separate like industry from games, right? Mm. And so there's this sort of like attachment towards like, if I make a game, it must be some sort of like industrial game, yeah. right? Um, and it, it's funny because like, um, you know, I use RPG Maker for my first game. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like no one questioned why I use RPG Maker. And that was definitely because I was trying to make my own Final Fantasy clone a million times, <laughs> right? And that obviously didn't work because my mm -hmm. perfectionism got in my own way. And then yeah. I made something completely like not Final Fantasy with it. Um, and I feel like I see that jerk. I feel like I see that journey, you mm -hmm. know, with a lot of people who, you know, start, you know, like, you know, um, kind of like just working, trying to work on their big thing, and then eventually, like, just like, just like toss something out, and that seems to be like get much more of like an authentic response from mm -hmm. other people. Um, so I, th I find that interesting with this maybe like anti-polish, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't know. Like, do people still like? I, I feel like. Like, is there still, like, this sort of fetishization of polish, you feel, like, now, given, like, maybe a little bit more of an acceptance of, like, DIY sort of game making? I think there's definitely more now than when I started. Okay. Um, you know, when I started, you didn't have things like itch.io or, you know. True. Yeah, um, you're right. Uh, you know, you, and there was, there was a lot of fetishization of polish that, <laughs> you know, uh, um, whereas, you know, we've kind of, I think games could, you, Game development culture has been able to broaden that a little bit and mm -hmm. say, you know, it's, it's, you don't need to do that. Um, but I think I think it's definitely still a trap that mm. is, is very easy to fall into um, if you're if you're not, you know, paying attention or you don't. You really need to kind of give your, your give yourself permission to be like, 
uh, I think the, the distinction between industry and, and not industry is, is so important. Um, one of my huge pet peeves is um, you know, talking about video game history. Um, it inevitably means talking about video game industry history, yes. right? It's always, yeah. you know, yeah. companies and console wars <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, John Carmack bought three Lamborghinis or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's like, that's, that's a story, that should be a story about shareware. And it's, right, you know, sure. it, which was, and it's, it just feeds into this narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, there's so, so, so much um, that is outside of that history. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like kind of one of the things that um, kind of from early on in Glorious Trainwrecks, like uh, there's a page on, on the Glorious Trainwrecks wiki, which is like, um, you know, other examples of like kind of what we were going for. And it's, you know, links to all kinds of random stuff that was around. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's never stopped, people have never stopped making right. DIY stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like that has always happened. It's just that you haven't always necessarily had a space or like a way to get other people to play them. Um, but like, you know, early on I can remember there's a link to something called like the John Lovitz trilogy, which is like this, <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's Game Factory or whatever, and it's like literally like a scan John Lovitz head on like a cartoon <laughs> body, and there's like a bunch of these platforming levels and an increasingly ridiculous storyline, and like, the only place that exists on the internet now is on Glorious Trainwrecks. It's someone, I uploaded my copy, it has my save games in it. <laughs> but like, that just disappeared. Um, and so like, there's, there's a huge amount of that stuff out there that is, you know, very ephemeral and, right. um, you know, because, it, you know, if, if it wasn't written down on Glorious Trainwreck, you know, it written, written down somewhere, like, it, it's, it's like it didn't happen anymore, right? Almost, right? Like, mm -hmm. but, it's, but it's always been there. Mm -hmm. What was the exact year that uh, Click and Play came out? That's a good question. Uh, yeah. Or when did, like, maybe, like, people <laughs> became, like... Yeah, like, it sort of kind of came into the community. Uh, Click and Play, 1994, it says. Wow. <laughs> okay, so, like, what well, is so, so interesting to me is that, like, Click and Play exists, mm -hmm. right? As in, like, literally a game was just made by an individual in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and then we don't see, like, the sort of resurgence of this until, like, 2012 with, like, other tools. Yeah. And it just makes you wonder, like, and I would even say even now that, like, DIY tools are still, like, now is kind of, like, might as well go to Unity. It's kind of, like, what, you know, yeah. this weird job where, like, I remember someone yeah. asked me, like, why don't you just use Unity? I'm like, huh? Like, that's, like, not, that's not a logical <laughs> job. <laughs> the, word, <laughs> the word just is doing a lot right. of heavy exactly. work. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very, it was very strange. So I'm, I'm really curious about, like, maybe from your perspective, because I personally was not, I have not been involved with, um, digital game making for so long, um, comparatively. So, like, what what do you find are, like, these forces that, like, you know, are subduing, like, shareware and things like click and play to, old, like, in, in a way, like, I know there was probably disgruntled people, like, when, like, Twine came out and everyone was like, everyone can make a game finally, and they're like, well, we've been making games all the, you know, like, but it's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's, like, this deta forced detachment from history yeah. that we have. So, like, mm -hmm. what forces do you see at play, play there? Well, I mean, I mean, one thing, obviously, is, like, I'm running click and play in a Windows right. XP virtual machine right. because there's there's almost no other way to do it. Right. Um, it's really awkward. Like when I started Glorious Trainwrecks, it was not entirely as awkward to use click and play as it is now, mm. um, because I mean, for lots of various boring technical reasons, right? Mm. Like there's a obsolescence that happens where it's like, and I mean, games in general loves to bury their past. Mm. Um, Literally. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like Click and Play, you know, was kind of the first iteration of this, and the company that made Click and Play is still around. There's Click Team, and they they what happened is kind of this journey that makes me really sad um, because you know you started with <coughs> Click and Play, which was very much you know meant to be very accessible, very playful, um, where anyone could kind of approach it and have a good time, no matter kind of what they're doing with it, even if they just play a game, like they're having a good time. Um, even if, you know, if they don't like creating a game, there's other things for them to do. Um, and it's kind of become, over time, like, and they made a lot of different releases. It went Click and Play, and then Games Factory, and Games Factory 2, and Multimedia Fusion, and Click Team Fusion, and whatever else. It's, it's this giant mess, and just every, every release just kind of shaves off more and more of the joy. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> like, like, it's just less and less kind of these inspiring, you know, weird things built in, and it's more like, oh, you know, the, the feedback that they're getting is like, oh, this is a toy, you know, I want to make right. real games. Right. Um, and they just kind of shifted towards catering to this audience um, mm -hmm. over time because, like, you can get into click and play and like enjoy it, and then like you'll run up against its limitations for sure, um, and that can be frustrating. You can be like, oh, I want to do this, and click and play won't let you do that, and so you know you can be inspired to kind of reach outside that zone, um, but you know in that progression, um, kind of the initial you know spark was lost, right? There's no way to. Uh, you know, a kid sitting down with Click Team Fusion today is not having anything resembling the same experience as a kid in 1994 mm -hmm. sitting down with Click and Play, right? It's just the, the accessibility is not there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this, this huge force, again, like in huge kind of, I don't know, whatever forces that just kind of like, okay, you built this toy and like people, the, your, your audience who bought this thing is now demanding it not be a toy anymore. And like you're leaving people behind, um, but uh, yeah, um, I'm trying to think. I had one something else I wanted to say about that, but I lost it. Um, It'll reappear. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's. I think that is fascinating because, like, you know, um, we are in a time in which game design is like professionalizing in another way, right? Now people can like have a game design degree, right? Mm -hmm. It's like we live in that world now. Right. Um, and it's just like this really interesting way of like standardization of like mm -hmm. what does it mean to kind of be like putting forth like um, the right amount of effort towards this game, right? Yeah. So um, just kind of like, you know, fucking around with like, you know, a tool seems like not a worthy, t you know, you know, uh, part of your time, right? Mm -hmm. um, and especially like, spending time with tools, like I feel like um, what's interesting about click and play, and I just saw so many features where I'm like, how is that not in like other stuff? It's like exactly. mind blowing. Yeah. Like that one where, yeah, when it was kind of like, hey, this thing's about to do a strange thing. Do you want to do something about that? I'm like, yeah. oh my God, like that was amazing. Yeah. Like, I wish I had that. Um, and the, the, yeah. the, literally the next version, like to Games Factory or whatever, like click and create, like the next version of click and play, drop that. Like, <gasps> That's like the best it, thing. <laughs> exactly. It's, I, yeah. I, I met one of the creators of Click and Play at GDC in 2012 and I, you know, thanked him and like, <laughs> it, it was kind of this, I don't know, it was a really amazing experience. Uh, but yeah, like that's, that's one of the things that, yeah, is, is in nothing else and it's right. so, like, once you see it, it's like, I want that, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Um, I think, uh, but, but what is interesting, <coughs> or what I guess was sad to me, um, is how um, that story that you told of like going from click and play to whatever now and maybe we can draw this like kind of line to like unity or whatever is like this um, kind of like this killing of idiosyncrasy mm. in the tools and I feel like what has been really upsetting to me as um, a person who doesn't make tools is not a programmer is how much tools like people have been ripping personality from tools themselves yeah and that I can't have a conversation and that's because I have a I have an arts background and you're usually like cool I'm like like let me mess around with this very particular kind of pen mm -hmm. let me mess around with this very particular kind of material mm -hmm. and find its affordances right um and so with the click and play you're kind of like trying to understand the tool itself and it's like weird you know it's weird mm -hmm. logics where I feel like um, now, like kind of tools in their in their own way are being disciplined into kind of being soulless themselves, oh, right? Really. Um, um, yeah. Do you have any? I'm kind of curious if you yeah. have other features or other kind of tools that maybe like had strange like idiosyncrasies. Um, I mean, I can definitely tell a story of like once click and play stopped being viable, and I like started looking at other tools. Like you can, if you look at like the history of games that I posted to Glorious Trainwrecks, right? Um, you'll find like the first forays into other tools, and like those games just don't. There's nothing to like. They're not interesting um, because it was like, oh my, I, you know, I would move to Game Maker and was like, oh, I don't know how to have the same sort of conversation. I don't know, like, um, I think having a conversation with a tool is like a very um, like something I experienced very strongly with something like click and play. Um, but there's, I mean, there's lots of. Um, you know, I can think of like kid picks, mm -hmm. or like uh, you know, WarioWare DIY. Of course, yeah. Um, 
you know, there's a fair amount of like, I think there was a few like where you were DIY jams on glorious train wrecks because mm -hmm. it was just like, oh, here's this thing. Um, you know, level editors for things can be like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, we have knit stories uh, here uh, where lots of people have kind of made stuff that's kind of informed by that. Um, and it's, you know, uh, no, I think it's really important and really, I, I really wish, you know, I, there can't be enough tools that have personality, in mm -hmm. my opinion, like, mm -hmm. um, and you just see so much um, when something gets traction, like, so much comes out of, out of that, so much of value mm -hmm. um, when you're able to put something in somebody's hands and, like, they can have a conversation with it, they can, you know, uh, put forth their own, mm -hmm. put their own personality into it and have it, you know, that whole process. Um, it's, you know, you see it with Twine too, like, mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, I gave Twine to my 10 year old, mm -hmm. um, and he just ran with it, right? Like, <laughs> um, and yeah, I just, yeah, um, there's, yeah, I think what you're speaking to is maybe there's like a part of this conversation about like DIY that's been missing this entire time was we also need DIY tool makers. Yes. Right? We like we need like people who make the tools. And that's like I'm like I'm totally like that person who's I've been like I just need other tools. Like mm -hmm. like I give me a weirdo tool and I will make a game, mm -hmm. but I just can't make the tool itself. And I kind of um, I think I got inspiration when um, how to become a great artist in mm -hmm. 10 seconds? Yes, in 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, came out, and I was, and then, you know, industry, right? right. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's like, you know, the idea of, um, you know, I know, like, you know, that making a tool set is just like an intense endeavor, but like, there just seems to be this like blockage of creativity when tools stop being made. Um, it's, and it's like, it's kind of like, yeah, and I, I wonder about like, <coughs> I, like I since I don't have the skills, I have no idea how to bridge that gap, right? Mm. Like, what is like the call to action for people who can make tools mm. to start making like more idiosyncratic, weird, purposefully like strange tools that should not be like, like not they should be accessible, but not necessarily like polished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, I think there is, you know, I, I definitely know of a few people who are, you know, kind of working on independent game tools and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, their names offhand are escaping me, but there's something a cool tool with a K. Um, of course, uh, Candle's been working on that for a really long time. Um, yeah, the Doodle Studio ninety five, I guess, came out recently, which is uh, I haven't actually used that, but it, it definitely looks like oh, I can just you know, draw stuff and, and make it kind of come alive and kind of make things more accessible. But yeah, I absolutely like um, uh, would really love to see um, more people building tools to be able to, to and, and, uh, and, and putting them out there and like putting personality into them. I think that's, I think it's very, it's, it's even easier to be perfectionist about making tools. <laughs> like I, I have my own project that I've been working on kind of off and on forever as well and it's never seen any light of day. Um, is there a game jam version for making tools? Is that a <laughs> Like hackathons. That's what like that's yeah. that's what we call those, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's tricky. Like it's it's finding that interesting, you know, small scope and building out. Bitsy is really good. Bitsy. The Bitsy community right now is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of activity around kind of expanding that out as well and like building new features into it because it's also very it's very malleable mm -hmm. in kind of a similar way that twine was where mm -hmm. like you can add extensions to it mm -hmm. and stuff like that and there's a lot of really interesting work happening around bitsy mm -hmm. um but yeah and that's an example of just like someone built this little tool and then yeah. people started using it and then there's this wonderful virtuous cycle i i did have one tool project that almost kind of made it um which is called marmots okay um which there are some artifacts of online, but I don't think I can actually turn it on right now. But Marmots was kind of this idea, uh, stands for the uh, Marvelous Multiplayer Online Text uh, Telnet Server. Um, so the goal was, you know, again, 
to being inspired by these old, uh, you know, DOS stuff, uh, ZZT, which was kind of this very, you know, limited palette of blocks, the ANC graphics. Um, and the idea I kind of had was like, okay, well, what if I took that kind of palette of things and like um, made that multiplayer somehow? Like mm -hmm. people can kind of edit worlds together or whatever in this kind of weird way. Um, and what I, I ended up building um, a tool where, I'm just gonna pick it random here, oh, that's not a useful one. Um, where it was basically just an art creation tool, that ANSI art creation tool that people could go and connect to at the same time and kind of do stuff together in. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the other things that was that I found with Glorious Trainwrecks was that all the tools that are out there are really kind of isolating. Like it's really difficult to be able to collaborate mm -hmm. um, with, with these accessible tools, um, with most of them. And I kind of really wanted to break this breakthrough one of my one of my big goals was I wanted to have some way of like, you know, not only being able to have a tool where I can make something, you know, kind of idiosyncratic in a short period of time, but to also like, you know, bring in friends into that experience and kind of riff off each other, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's just, it, it's it's not, the, the tools do not support that. <laughs> um, but, so basically I made this thing where you can, oh, Firefox 43. Um, where you can could log in just with a regular um, using Telnet, which is kind of this very kind of ancient protocol that has no security or anything mm -hmm. like that, um, and all the code just kind of ran on the server, so there was nothing. Uh, I kind of didn't have. There were a lot of kind of engineering problems that I could just pretend weren't problems, <laughs> um, and people would just come and make art on this thing, um, and it was kind of really That's great. Nice. Um, I like the question marks on this. One. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I wish it, I don't think it's running, or I would bring it up. Whoa. Yeah. Um, That's cool. And then and uh, <coughs> I ended up like hooking in like there's like a little chat s system. So oh, cool. if people were working together, you could also not only like see their cursor move around mm -hmm. and as they added stuff, but you could like talk to them and, mm -hmm. and it would kind of uh, notify you when when people were excited. So it was just kind of. Um, and the thing that I kind of never, um, never was able to do, your mission is to draw triangles. Uh, the, the, the gap I was never able to bridge was like, okay, I ended up I, building this tool for making ANSI art, and I just never kind of got over the hump of, okay, now I'm going to add kind of some kind of interactivity to it, um, and some way of editing that, and that's, and someday I would still like to be able to do that. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of one, one thing that I would really also like to see. In, in addition to having, I think the idiosyncrasies, the idiosyncrasies really worked out well because you, when I was building Marmots, you know, there was this wonderful virtuous cycle where I just kind of put out the dumbest thing, you know, the simplest thing, and then people started using it, and that kind of helped me, you know, get over the hump of, you know, adding stuff to it and adding more features and, and supporting people in what they were building. Um, so, yeah, be Al. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, this actually reminds me of um, a Monica that Anna Anthony mm -hmm. just put out. Um, but it's interesting about, like, thinking about what are these creative, like, play spaces that are, you know, uh, being created. And in a, in a way, it's interesting, I was just at another thing where we were discussing um, the kind of like the differences between like, like public, like kind of public art and like private, mm -hmm. um, and how much these tools act as like a private, like a, kind of like a, a way of private communication between people. Um, like I made, like my, when I made my first game, it was a private communication with another person that I decided to like just like post on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I, I wonder about like that relationship. I mean, obviously there's, it's great to have communities, right? Like mm -hmm. we have communities and we're supportive and you know, there is this kind of motivating factor when you're like going to um, make something and post it on the, you know, in, in, on the internet for your internet friends to kind of like like. Um, and, and I think it's interesting to see these, especially when so many of these like kind of weirdo game making tools, I feel like I, I, there was a bunch that was in the 90s that were kind of like coded, like, I don't think it was called Storybook, but there was like this like mm -hmm. one, yeah, there's like this story one I just vaguely remember in the back of my, in the back of my head. 
um, along with all, yes, is that one, Story Book Weaver? It was weird. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we, you know, it's like trapped in like past, mm. right? Like no yeah. one is making Story Book Weaver stuff. I feel like I should now that I thought about it. I'm just <laughs> doing Story Book Weaver things. Um, but as a kind of a, a personal thing, um, you know, um, now that it is like, you know, it, we're in this second decade of the, of, of the 21st century, now that you don't have to make games for commercial reasons, there is this interesting function for things like this, the things that are quick, when mm. I'm kind of like, I just need to like, just like tell you something, or I just mm. need to do a very quick thing, or whatever, in which like this kind of function, this uh, these kind of tools start to kind of like function in. So I'm kind of like curious about like, like have like like you know have any like games that have been submitted seen that they kind of served another purpose outside of like I just made a thing maybe there was like I made this for um, communicating a particular thing to a friend or I use this mm. as an expression in a particular way yeah for sure like I can think of a uh, number of like people make games for people's birthdays on glorious oh, yeah, that's cute. and it's just like yeah it was, it's so nice like you get a little mm. game or whatever and like um, you know um, I've done for, you know, anniversaries or whatever, mm -hmm. or Valentine's Day or whatever. You know, it's just like, here, here's a little thing that I made, and it's, you know, when when something is is you when you're able to do something quickly or whatever, mm -hmm. and 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 kind of keep that scope, you know, very small, then you can say a lot of, you can have you can say a lot more things, mm -hmm. um, and and do it for a lot more reasons. Um, There's the Secret Santa. Yeah, the Secret Santa, of course. Um, so pretty much, yeah, every Christmas for a few years now, um, uh, we have an event, Glorious Turner X has an event where um, everyone posts, uh, people who want to participate will post uh, into a forum thread um, that's basically like, I would like to participate in this, here are some things that I like in a game, um, and then the list of people who you know, posted gets randomized and each person gets assigned a secret you know, person they're making oh, a game yeah. for, um, and most of most most of the time, you know, the person who signed up does make a game. And they get <laughs> yeah. a game. Like it's sometimes it gets away from people or whatever, but uh, but yeah, that's a really nice thing. Um, and it's been yeah, it's been going on for a few years now, and it's just um, it's really neat to see what people come up with for people and like um, and they get posted for everybody too to enjoy, mm -hmm. but. I kind of like this idea of, um, like, you, like, you know, so how people think about, okay, what am I going to get this person for Christmas? Okay, they really like um, bath salts, I don't know, something, whatever. But, like, <laughs> what is, like, a game version of that, right? Of, like, okay, I know this person. Like, what is, like, like, do you all of a sudden have, like, a game, a kind of game interaction that is, like, you know, like, essently you like you know you you and so like mm. whenever someone's thinking okay, how am I gonna make a game for Maddie is oh like they always going to include something or is there some sort of theme that's always involved like I kind of like this idea of, like when you start because like maybe for birth is, is there like a genre of birth you know because like Hallmark cards mm -hmm. right like birthday you can kind of like think of like exactly like the words that you put in like a birthday card like mm -hmm. are is there like a you know genre rules to like you know birthday games you know I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's really varied. Like, um, yeah, I can think of, um, yeah, uh, I've, I've participated a couple of times, um, and the, the things that I made at both of those times were extremely different, mm -hmm. um, because, like, one ended up being, like, this weird, like, you know, existential Christmas horror game, basically. <laughs> um, and... Be and it was just kind of like I was looking at. He he basically posted. I think his wish list was like I like surprises. <laughs> oh, so there are wish lists. Yes. So oh. people kind of post their wish list of here's the kind of stuff that I like, oh, or you cute. know, I would like a game that has this in it. <laughs> um, and then you can kind of check things off the list. Um, and so that he he I just he had just kind of said I like surprises, and so I kind of looked through his work and was like, oh, you like know, this and this, and I kind of sketched some things out, and then it. What I came up with was kind of deeply weird, um, but it was very Surprise! surprising. You're <laughs> um, depressed. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna keep asking questions, but if you all are starting to like bubble up with like questions, like feel free to raise your hand, and I will incorporate you into this interview process. Um, but yeah, no. So I think I find that interesting because then, the, like, now there's like all these like different 
uses. For, I feel like there should be like this maximalist approach, like let's just do everything with games. Like yeah. sure, we've done that with like the quantified self and not that thing, like really like you know sketchy right now. But like there's like lots of other, you know, like yeah, like kind of like this idea of like a birthday card. Like hey, let's just like get rid of birthday cards and just have like birthday games, or like let's have like you know all these other you know uses once mm. like these tools start happening. So if you could ha if you could kind of like you know, you know, if you were like God's hand and you were going to like, you know, shift like this new wave of like a oh, very strange use for this, these sorts of like DIY games, like what would it be? Um, you know, like the thing that I, I'm always striving towards is like, um, just like, it's, I don't know, it's just like hanging out with friends, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was when I was a kid and I had like QBasic or whatever, and that was the tool that was most accessible to me. It was like I could write little basic text games or whatever. I would just have friends over and we would make games together. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just like this really nice thing that I've I always kind of wanted to have in my life. That's really difficult to have. Mm -hmm. um, and you're just kind of sitting around and, and bouncing ideas off each other and just making this thing. And you're not doing it. You're just kind of doing it as this this playful thing. Um, I. I think, you know, being able to make make a game as a playful thing that is just enjoyable on its own is really uh, wonderful when it works out that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to see tools and everything to support that. Um, well, yeah, I mean, well, I feel like in a way, like that is like we've we've always we've had like and you showed like tools that seem to be games themselves, mm -hmm. right? And so I feel like that's a kind of interesting. Like, how do we start positioning? like these tool games, I guess, as mm -hmm. like together with friends, right? Since, mm -hmm. you know, maybe maybe these tools were, well, they were made at a time in which like your computer was like here mm -hmm. and like you just don't like, you know, other people are not like necessarily coming, you know, to join you on the computer like necessarily um, mm -hmm. at that time. But now that we have such like open, flat, like accessible ways and like where multiple people can kind of compete, I guess, mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, I'm kind of curious as to, yeah, like what is like a, like what is a, like, you know, hey everyone, we're having a, like a party and like there's like this like game way in which you're making and modding it as like yeah. you go along. That's interesting, huh? Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I don't know, I'd love to see like a Snapchat for games, right? Like you a make Snapchat a, for games, You cool. make a game and then you just, That's you a know, game jam, yeah. And it's, you, you, you just literally like, you know, the same way you would play with a filter, you just like make something, you know, a little mm -hmm. interactive thing in like, you know, three minutes or whatever, and then you send it to your friend, and then they open it up, and they're like, oh. Well, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> you know. Um, I, there's, I, I feel like there's so much possibility out there, and it's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, mean, I, I, I just love to see all of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like, um, you know, there's, like, uh, you know, whenever I talk about, like, yeah, games now that I'm in, like, you know, these other art spaces that are not game spaces, and now the reaction from people like, everyone plays games, it's so amazing. And I'm like, yeah, I guess it's technically true. And I think it's kind of interesting to think about, like, yeah, like, um, right now, maybe, like, when you peek over someone's shoulder and you're seeing, like, what game they are playing on, you know, um, their phone, it's like, mm -hmm you know, a derivative of some, like, whatever. Mm. And I kind of think, like, it would be interesting if they were making the derivatives, right? If, like, if it, instead it was, like, sort of, like, I mean, I feel like there might be a game-making tool for a phone. Does anybody know? Are there game-making tools, like, as, like, on the phone? Like, you no. use the phone itself, yeah. I uh, can't remember the name of it right now, but there's one that sort of has an interface, a 3D interface that looks like Minecraft, but you can apply logic to the different blocks and create, like, moving objects. Okay. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I blocks. I would love to. It's not Roblox. <laughs> no. Uh, Interesting. I wish I could remember the name. So. I mean, like, it's, it's pretty cool. cool. Okay, cool. There's well, also uh, all of Inkerpare's yeah. uh, game-making tools run in mm -hmm. HTML5. Okay. So like playing, playing, and flick game, you mm -hmm. can just, you can just like open up Safari or whatever, and then just start drawing your your levels and stuff. I kind of like this idea of like I'm going to go on the train and in my commute I'm just going to make this game and then like mm. send it the moment I get internet again. You know, like <laughs> that kind of like that sort of like rhythm of like, um, especially because like when we consider that like game design often like you know why we make decisions is because there is some sort of like intent and you're kind of like going. Like you're you're making a journey into the game mm -hmm. in some way, um, and just kind of figuring out what is that journey into the game in such a short amount of time that anyone mm -hmm. can kind of like use that, right? Mm -hmm. 
I think they're uh, like, I mean, the difference between a game that you might send to a friend and like, the difference between a game that they're going to, you know, sit and poke at on their phone is like, you know, that game on, on your phone is designed to suck all your attention for right. as long as it will, right, exactly. you know, matter. And like, one of the things that I've definitely, you know, with Glorious Trainwrecks, you know, people making personal stuff or whatever, it's like, I can sit down and I can play this and I can get what needs to be out of it in five minutes or whatever, right? right? Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there is this, you know, kind of fundamentally different way of kind of interacting with stuff um, that just is, is also just more personal, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's just, um, when you play a personal game that, that someone just kind of made and it's just a little thing, like, it's not, it, it's, Communicating something very different than, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, something else you might be doing on the train. Like it's a, it, it right. fills a different need, and it's it's um, you know I'd love to see do much more of that on my phone right. than to you know play these puzzle games and right you know, yeah lose, my, lose myself. In yeah, there. I've gotten to the point where like I, some people might narrow the game like Mini Metro, and I only I played that mm -hmm. on the subway because I'm just so like. I should play a subway game while I'm on the subway, and it makes me insane. And I think that's just because like I can't find that right game that like I can like get into, enjoy. I feel like I'm reflecting in some weird way, like during a train ride. Um, like yeah, there's some people can pull off like watching episodes on their phone. I like, I don't know what it is. Like I can't do that. Like there's like too much like concentration going on. So I'm always, I'm always kind of curious as to like what is that sort of interaction, right? In which I can kind of like. If I was to do like the Snapchat of games, like mm -hmm. would it be like you know swipe down for kind of like bullet hell, and then like you know swipe <laughs> right for romance, you know like what like kind of like what would be like the filters? Like what do you imagine would be like the filters of the Snapchat of, of games? Uh, I think definitely like something like Flick Game would. Uh, this is kind of an obvious thing. Like you know poke here, and then you get this picture, right? You can just you know take a few different selfies or whatever, and then right. like you know um, put some buttons up or whatever, a uh, little choose your own adventure type thing. Um, mm. That's like kind of the obvious, but yeah, it'd be fun to have, you know, other kind of, like Snapchat already kind of has, you know, little games that you put yourself in. Mm -hmm. you, you need to have stuff like that too, mm -hmm. where it's like not only, it, it kind of doesn't work two ways though. It's like, oh, you can, you know, move your head and play the game and then you can send someone your, the recording of you playing the <laughs> right. game, right? Like, it's like, it'd be nice to like be able to personalize something and then just send it to someone and then, you know, then they can play your thing. Yeah, can you turn like stories into like choose your own adventure? Like that would be kind of interesting, like Instagram mm. stories. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, did I see? I thought I saw. Yes, a hand. Well, I have a hand. Yeah, go on. Do you have a hand? No, I'll break. <laughs> um, so I have like two quick questions. Like one is like, uh, are you are you against? Do you find it like against your personality or something doing like commercialistic games? Have you tried? And then also like, uh, are you interested in like non digital like? non-commercialistic kind of games? Um, yeah, so um, I don't work in the games industry kind of mostly, I mean, I feel like I just kind of dodged a bullet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, mostly just because I heard horror stories about the, the labor and I was just like, okay, well, I, I can, you know, enjoy myself writing programs that aren't games and being paid to do that. That would be okay. So I'm going to, and so like, and you know, there, there have been periods of times in, like, periods of time when commercial games are interesting. Um, you know, um, I kind of, there was a period in my life where, like, I was pretty much, you know, I was almost, like, done with video games, and then, like, the Dreamcast came out, and there was all kinds of <laughs> bizarre stuff for the Dreamcast, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> video games are interesting. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I kind of burned out on, like, you know, graphic adventures for, you know, for PC and it kind of mm -hmm. went up their own butt for a while and just like you know and that you know there's definitely been some interesting ideas out there commercially at different periods of times these days like if I walk into a GameStop it's like none of, I care about none of this mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah in terms of non-digital stuff like I'm totally for non-digital digital stuff I think that's that's um, yeah I, I think there's lots of possibility in that space as well. Um, I have a couple of non-digital games that I designed for Glorious Trainwrecks. I, I think at one point, like my laptop was broken or something, and so like I designed a card game, a solitaire roguelike with playing cards um, that sort of worked. And I was like, okay, uh, that was fun. Um, but that's also non-digital games are interesting because you can. 
it's it's a lot easier to cheat when you're making a non-digital game, right? Like it's a lot easier to just yeah. take whatever you have at hand and not be constrained by whatever tool because you can just you, you write a rule on a piece of paper and then you right. follow the rule right. or like you know you, you draw something and then that's the thing or you make a card or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's not something that I do a lot of, but like it's it's super valuable and I I'd love to you know if there's a glorious train wreck of non-digital games, I'd love to see it. Yeah, I actually. Um, a very like underused tool I find is the Makey Makey. Mm -hmm. um, like it's like it's it's let's say it's like digital plus non digital. Like for people who don't want to fully like you know divorce themselves from digital. But like if you don't know the Makey Makey, essentially it just can make a controller button out of anything that can conduct electricity, including human bodies. Um, um, and it's just interesting, kind of like you know I did a you know my own work with that and I think that's kind of like an interesting extension of this, right? Mm -hmm. Like the best games to use for the Mickey Mickey are the ones that like Glorious Trend like like mm -hmm. click and play and things would do, right? Things that are kind of like simple but obviously absurd because mm -hmm. you're also like just because usually the Mickey Mickey is making you like use like bananas or people's yeah. bodies or whatever. And so you're just like too busy like trying to figure out like how do I touch you? You know, like you know, yeah. how to like how do I do all this other stuff that like yeah. That like trying to do something complex like on the screen is like not necessary, yeah. right? So I think in a way like when you think about like a non-digital extension of these games, it might just be like maybe these games just don't necessarily always have to belong on like a PC like setup. There might be all these other like hardware kind of like you know um, uh, alliances to be made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think if. Uh anyone's done anything with Makey Makey or anything like that. Um, Glorious train wrecks. Uh, Usually Makey Makey make is cheap. It is, yeah, it is it's fun. cheap. Other questions, yeah? Oh, I was just wondering, uh, I know you're not as active in the current uh, Glorious train wrecks, but do you have from like early on like a, a couple favorites that you might want to show us? Uh, that were posted on the website. Uh, <laughs> You my favorites. <laughs> uh, pretend your platforming's really good. Pretend your platforming. Oh, uh, pretend your platforming's so good. Uh, okay, so this is this is uh, made by very long time community member Danny. Mm -hmm. uh, Or the desktop. So use the arrow keys, uh, but you can just go wherever. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody jumps in midair. No. It's like oh, I gotta jump. I gotta fall. <laughs> oh no! Nobody magically floats in place in midair. Yeah! Oh, did I jump too high? Nobody jumps that high. Ooh. It's tricky. Here we go. Coming onto the platform now. What? Yeah. Oh, I guess I can fall down here. Okay. Oh wow, that was realistic. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's high. Oh. <laughs> I love the judge. <laughs> <laughs> that was not realistic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jump here. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that one's a really good one. Uh, yes. uh, yeah, no, I, I think there's lots, there's lots of good stuff. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, 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 okay. I gotta show you one of my favorite uh, joke games. Uh, where is it? 
How do you kill a circus? <laughs> I love this game. I love it so much. <laughs> How do you kill a circus? Second greatest train wrecks version of a lame joke ever. This is on the Internet Archive. You can play it in your browser. I thought it was important to preserve. Um, all right. So how do you kill a circus? Oh, my God. So you have the most control. <laughs> and you click to shoot. Wrong. What? Wrong. Go for the juggler. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> That's the game. This is, yeah, this is now on the Internet Archive. This will this will outlast me. Yeah, future generations will be able to go back and, and play the game. Um, what else is there? I know. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I could go on forever. Uh, there's there's obviously 10 years of history here. Um, Are there injuries? Yeah. Any other questions? Actually, I have a quick question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, if I remember correctly, at least until the mid two thousands, Click Team was still hosting a free download of Click and Play on their website. Yes. You know so it, it was buried, but it was there. Yeah. Do you know if it's still there? Uh, I haven't looked. So yes. yeah, I'll expand on this a little bit. So like, when Glorious Trainwreck started, Click Team had obviously moved on and made like later and later versions. There was like multimedia fusion out there by that point. But they had this version of Click and Play that was for free. You could just go on their website and download it, and it would Click and Play for schools. Oh. And like that was why we used Click and Play, because not only was it like, oh, this wonderful tool, it was also, you could just get it. And just, mm -hmm. all you had to do was... Like DIY game making. Um, I feel like in the sense, like, you know, um, I was involved with DIY game making starting in around like 2012. Um, and I feel like, uh, I mean, at least now, there is a little bit of like, Whenever someone asks me, oh, like what game I've made or something, like, oh, I used to make like autobiographical games. Like, oh, everyone does that. I guess that's you know mm -hmm. a thing now that everyone right. does. But now I'm kind of curious as to like, yeah, like where, where do we see like maybe its legacy still living or anticipating? Because I feel like where these sorts of things kind of pop up is like, it's kind of it's like a, it's kind of like this need to kind of like like restore people's creativity mm. in some way, right? Like a bunch of people who are kind of like, I can, I am not allowed to make games for yeah. a particular reason. Is it like, mm. I'm not industry, or I'm not a programmer, or I'm not like a man, or mm. I'm not like a whatever, right? Mm. And eventually like each of these kind of gates have come down. And so, but like, because of like the sort of like, um, you know, the idea of like indie, right? I, I don't know, like how, how many developers would you say were like, self-identifying as indie when you were kind of like going through the early days of lawyers trying to or even now uh yeah i don't know like it was definitely i really i i enjoyed that it was it, for a time there was this really weird mix of like people who like were indie and like mm -hmm. this was their job or whatever they were they were they were you know heavily invested in putting out games mm -hmm. but they would also participate in these these you know ridiculous game jams with people who you know, had no experience making games right. and like would help out or, you know, would be kind of this positive force for, oh, I played this and I really enjoyed it, you know, mm -hmm. this aspect of it or whatever, and kind of contribute to that. Um, and so like having that space where, you know, kind of a very, you know, varied level of experience can mm -hmm. can still kind of come together and, and enjoy the process of making right. games was was really cool. Um, I don't know how much that's happening these days, um, but the community has kind of gone in, in all, it's, it continues to go in very interesting directions, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and making very interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, it's still very, kind of a very open place for, you know, I can post my dumb joke games and people can post their autobiographical mm -hmm. games, and, you know, that's very acceptable, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is, yeah, it's super Out important. of curiosity of people here, how many people have either made some like click and play or posted a glorious train wreck or has made like a game using a, a DIY tool that didn't require programming, like Game Maker or Twine or things like that? Okay, so it was like kind of, I feel like that's really interesting because um, I feel like what, at like some point in time, 
if you even if you got, grabbed like a group of people who were in game dev mm -hmm. but were like non programmers, right? You wouldn't get that same like kind of you know response of like, yeah, I do make strange joke games or mm. I make games about like you know my inner demons <coughs> or whatever you know casually mm. you know and I think that's an interesting um an interesting effect of like or anything like that right. I don't even think uh, that they have anything to say in that medium right. and it's just like I don't know it's it's there's a vast vast you know world and like I think it's expanding that kind of in any direction is is important, and it's it's you get you do you, you have you have no idea what the effects of it will be. Mm -hmm. um, for sure, uh, we have like a couple more minutes for any last minute questions that people might have been hiding in their souls. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw a hand. Too late, you already put it up. <laughs> How do you overcome perfectionism? Oh, you gotta go first on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you tell me. Because, um, like, I did this for 10 years and I still have problems with it. So, um, but I think, yeah, just like, um, again, like limiting scope and like giving yourself uh, permission to, to have something that's, that's small and that, and being, a, being willing to call it, you know, done when it's small and still broken. Um, and if you any way you can find to give yourself that permission and to like um, to convince yourself to make a small thing um, and not get carried away with um, ever grander visions and ever uh, you know just limiting just, the only thing that's worked for me so far is kind of just limiting the time just yeah, like making I was just about to say. you know yeah. make a game in a week you yeah. know or on a weekend or in a couple of hours or whatever just like be able to have a process where you're like, okay, after, at the end of this, I'm going to be done, and it will be what it will be. And you know, if if at the end of the, you know, a week, you really want to work on it more, then that's okay. Yeah. There's no rule that says you can't. Mm -hmm. um, it's just being able to kind of narrow that scope and and give yourself a, a time limit is is it's the only way to not you know get discouraged and just give up and not have you know just have this thing and sitting on your hard drive that's half done that nobody's ever seen, right. which I have my share of those things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I don't. Um, yeah, I think the only, thi the only thing that stops the creative process is a deadline, to be quite honest. <laughs> you know, it's, it's literally the truth. Like, you will go on forever until someone says, you have to or you don't eat. Or you have to or you don't, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah? Um, just on the subject of kind of when you're talking about polish, like we were looking at the platformer and most mm -hmm. of it seemed very loosey goosey, mm -hmm. but then when it hit the you know the uh, judge scene, mm -hmm. it was pretty tight, right? <laughs> and and the one thing I'm wondering is, have you seen people kind of sort of subvert it, the glorious train next ethos by like perversely polishing <laughs> one very yeah. like particular <laughs> bit of what right. is otherwise very polish. rough, yeah. like. Like, yeah. where that is a semiotic that jumps out at you. Like, oh, they, you know. Hi, Robert. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the f <laughs> so, called, so called out right now. Um, I, I'm trying to think of anything on Glorious Trainwrecks in particular, um, where, where people have kind of perversely polished a thing. Um, I mean, the... One thing that comes to mind is uh, King P Tetris might actually be. I, I can show you kind of an example of like polish uh, as kind of a joke. Here, let's, let's do this. Yeah, this is good. So King P Tetris was kind of a very early game um, by a developer QR Leon, who um, he's he's on Twitter now as Rabbit Boots. Um, where can I find this? This is. Breathtaking Triumphs page. I think it's also on the cabinets. <laughs> I think it's one of the Can be Tetris. There we go. Oh, is it? Is it? Oh, the the newer version is probably on the cabinets, but I don't. Did uh, Kira Leon put all stuff on? I think it's actually the newer the newer version. Yeah, it's probably Danny's version, um, which is great, and you should play it. Um, but I'll show you 
the original Quick and Play Tetris. Um, so here we go. Here's a block, and then I'll just use the arrows to uh, place this block. Okay, this is. Uh, this is uh, I'm trying to find here. What? Is that an afternoon delight? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you like rotate that in there? Sure. Yeah. And what? space battle. <laughs> and then, as you get your blocks get hit, they get taken away from your ship, and then I scored 502 points. Nice. Um, so that is the original Click and Pay Tetris, and then someone else in the community made a remake, uh, KMP Tetris the Grandmaster, um, um, kind of based on the uh, later uh, you know, Tetris the Grandmaster uh, later remakes. Gonna boot up, or we're gonna have to just tell you to play it on the arcade cabinets. It's there. Oh, no. I don't think no. the virtual machine's gonna agree with me. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. But like you can see on the the screenshot uh, here, where it's like there's this incredibly high resolution space background, <laughs> like um, so that's that's something that definitely comes to mind. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Cool. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for being with us. And, yeah, yeah. good time. <laughs> I guess everyone go and try out that, you know, AMP on the cabinet, and we can talk some more. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Give it, give it another round of applause for our guests. And if you didn't know, this is also part of a, a show. Uh, it's the Glorious Trainwrecks across Baby Castle show. There are a bunch of uh, Glorious Trainwrecks games on all the cabinets. Uh, if you want a beverage, you can go to the donation center in the back. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, we were talking about Click of the Month Club, and next week will be a two-hour Click of the Month Club hosted here at Baby Castle. So if you want to make a click and play game or an RPG maker game, you can come and hang out and uh, make a game. So yeah, thanks for coming. Bye. There's also this, which is an event going on right now. So anyone who plays, uh, who wants to make a game, there's an introduce yourself, make a little autobiographical game to say hi to the community. There you uh, go. So there's an event Sorry for that. <laughs> and if you want to play some uh, click and play MIDI, <laughs> that would be pretty nice. Yeah, sure. Yeah. The Canyon. Canyon. Oh, it's yeah, next week. Okay. Next yeah, 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 Saturday. Yeah. Next Saturday. What time? Uh, uh, same time as this. Oh. Some, 7.30. Oh, all the quick games is on the coffee. Oh, my God. There is one machine dedicated for it. Whoa. 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 Big ball. So it just bounces around. So in click and play games, you see a lot of things just kind of randomly bouncing around because it's literally that easy to do. So, okay. I have a bouncing invisible man. Um, let's put some wizards in here. <laughs> uh, where are the wizards? What is it? Is it myths and monsters? No, they're myths and monsters. Oh, there's also like a library of backdrops too. So um, I'm gonna use the well, my favorite click and play backdrop, which is Merry Christmas. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, like I guess you were you know some of them are like for cards. Like there's a Happy New Year backdrop <laughs> and like. Uh, congratulations, uh, there's like a happy birthday, it's, you know, it's like, oh, you can make, you know, uh, a, a, a video game gift for somebody. It was just like, this is a thing that, because it's easy to make stuff, you know, it's not 
constrained to what you would ordinarily think of a video game as well. Like, you can have a sink, you know, it's just kind of built in. A really nice chair, you know. Um, there's this incredible right. You know, like, when's the last time you played a game with a gramophone? Like, uh, it's it's been too long. Um, all right, so wizards. Uh, where's Merlin? Characters. That's where he is. So here's here's Merlin. <laughs> He's casting very quickly. Um, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. <laughs> So I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna make Merlin have the race car movement because I think Merlin should be a race car. Um, so, <laughs> and I want. I want to make. I need. To, need to do one more thing to kind of make it clear what's happening with the race car movement. Um, so if you go into animations, so like, uh, it has kind of a bunch of built-in animations. Usually with the clip art kind of built-in stuff, it's just, um, you know, there's one that just plays all the time, which is fine. Um, you can kind of specify, you know, the graphics. So like, it's just facing left, you can say, oh, flip it horizontally, and then, you know, or copy it to play right. So you can have a wizard moving left or a wizard moving right. And of course, uh, what, you like, what I like to do is set, you know, 32 directions, you have a lot of kind of different things. And then there's a little button here saying create other directions by rotating this one. So this will just generate like a million <laughs> different rotated wizards, and it's it's my favorite button in Click and Play, I think. Um, you can preview the animation, um, and so now we like just kind of test out the game. Here we are. So like I can use the oh. <laughs> there we go. So I can use these left and right arrow keys to kind of turn them, and then like the forward and back it changes the acceleration. And so he just controls incredibly awkwardly and jitters around everywhere, and this is great. I love this. Um, so another kind of really amazing idea is like that Click and Play does, and none of the successors to Click and Play do. Um, so everything in uh, successors to Click and Play have this thing called the event editor, and it's you know if you've never thought about this kind of stuff before, it might be a little intimidating. So Quick and Play also has this thing called the step through editor. And literally what this does is it just, you plunk stuff down, you go in the step through editor, and then when something happens, it says, something happened. What do you want to do, what do you want to do when this thing happens? So it's like, oh, the invisible man is leaving the play area on the bottom. Well, kind of by default, it'll bounce, and then maybe we can play a sound. So. Look at the built in click and play sounds, of which there is lots. Here's a sample. So there's a bunch of categories alarms, animals, effects, elements, impacts, machines, movement, natural people, toy land, voices. So this is, I mean, we can do the, this is kind of, oh, it's not even in voices. People. I was looking for the, uh, here it is, the very classic. Uh, this is my yeah! <laughs> my favorite sound in all of Click and Play. Um, people say it's overdone, but I don't care. Yeah! 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 So just every time it bounces off the wall, off the bottom wall, it'll say yard. Okay, cool. And then you continue. Yeah! And then something else happens. Oh, it's going to leave on the left. Do you want to do something different for that? I was like, yeah, of course I do. I want you know a bird. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's going to bounce off the top. What do I do then? Maybe alien dot wave, sure. <laughs> Bird coo? Sure. Bird coo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. <coughs> the invisible man has collided with the wizard. What should we do now? Um, so there's a few things you can play sample, change score. And this, this is a simplified version. Like click and play can do more things than this. But again, because they're trying to keep it not intimidating, there's like a, a smaller section of stuff. Um, so one of the things we can do is we can create a new object. So like mm -hmm. whenever the Invisible Man collides with Merlin, we'll create another wizard. <laughs> and we can just make it, um, and you can say, okay, relatives to some other object, so I'm, like, I'm gonna make it you know, just behind him, something like that. And then we should obviously play some kind of magic sound for that. Um, Flibber.wave? Yeah, sure. 
Oh, now two wizards have collided. <laughs> <laughs> what should we do when two wizards collide? Uh, one of the things Merlin can do is he can bounce him, he can destroy him, or he can have him shoot something, like another wizard. <laughs> and we can just say, shoot him in a random direction. Wow. So like, pick what direction you want to shoot him in, and like 100 speed, sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Merlin's going to leave the play area on the top. Well, that won't do. Uh, so, yeah, stop Merlin. That's fine. Oh, no. Oh. I don't think it's going to stop him. <laughs> Merlin enters the play area on the top. If you want to do something about that? No, I'll just keep going. This is uh, pretty good. And of course, these all get controlled with the race car control. <laughs> so you control them all at once. Oh, the invisible man bouncing off the wall on the right. That should be there. Yeah. And of course, as soon as that happens, it's just wizard pandemonium forever now. Oh, I pressed the fire button. What should that do? Um, destroy all wizards. Destroy all <laughs> wizards. Just remember them. <laughs> Last wizard has been destroyed. Well, then we need to create a new wizard. Um, I'll just put it in the middle of the screen. You can't just you can't be without wizards. So. You can have a wizard kill switch, but you can't you can't kill wizards ever, forever. <laughs> people here sitting watching me talk, I can introduce myself and talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. Um, so my name is Jeremy Penner, and I started Glorious Trainwrecks, which is a over 10 years long running community, um, which was kind of, um, initially the idea was to intentionally make kind of kind of throw away garbage games, you know, games that were not, I don't know, I, I just hate not having anything here, just the Windows XP, so. Um, so, and the idea was, I was, actually, I should, I should actually find that, I should find the game that inspired me to make Glorious Trainwrecks, or, it's not the game that inspired me to make Glorious Trainwrecks, but it is, like, a game. I don't know if it's on the archive. Let's bring it back Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, but the idea behind Warrior Trainwrecks was I was playing, it was like 2 in the morning, 
And I'm playing these old kind of DOS freeware shareware games. And there was a game in particular that I think of a lot when I think of like, uh, which was, it's a game called The Last I Caught. <laughs> and I, sh I, I should bring up a screenshot at least. It's on Moby Games. Um, the Last Dykoff is made is a game that was made by, um, I guess, a demo group called Alpha Helix. Uh, I think they're Finnish, I want to say. But basically, in this game, you are this round beer bottle here. You shoot bottle caps at other beer bottles, and you know it's when I. Uh, excuse me. Those days, a four megabyte zip file called beer.zip, and that was all I knew about it. It was like it was big, and it sounded amusing. Um, and so I downloaded it, and you know, I just played it, and it's just this goofy thing. Um, And it just plays these goofy sound effects, and like literally, literally the four megabytes is just sound effects, right? Like it's this music which is sampled, um, and uh, yeah, and it's just obviously this. Um, you know, the, I feel like the people who made this, you know, had fun while they were making it, right? Like it's just kind of this in joke for their friends or whatever. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's, 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 it's I find this game, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that kind's really hard to get, um, but yeah, it's just kind of like this really goofy thing, um, and I loved it, and when I started Glorious Trainwrecks, um, you know, ten years ago or so, um, it was, I, I wasn't seeing a lot of goofy stuff like this being made. Like, I thought there, there was kind of an indie game movement going on where people were making games, but there was kind of a lot of emphasis on, you know, uh, I don't know, craftsmanship or, like, making something good. Um, and, like, at the time that I started the site, like, I had just moved out of the country. I'm from Canada. I was... Um, living in uh, the Seattle area for a while and like was kind of a first big move away from home and so I was kind of isolated and I was like working in this kind of research software development job and like the last thing in the world that I needed on my plate was like another outlet for perfectionism um, but I just I don't know I loved these weird games and I like wanted to make more weird games and like I didn't want them to I didn't want to care if they were you know fun or like tuned or whatever like I just wanted to have a good time making them um, and so I don't know I was I remember it being two in the morning and I was I am uh, with my friend six who's here um, and I was just like Fuck it, I'm gonna start a website. And it's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna register GloriousTrainWrecks.com, and it's just gonna be about these ridiculous games because you know there's there's a bunch of stuff like, like this kind of, you know, if you if you look, you know, there's all these freeware shareware games. And the other thing I like about this game is like it's obviously made by like maybe a couple of people. Like there's like a programmer and an artist and like a sound. You no, know, it's just a couple of friends goofing around, um, and it's like. I don't know, I wanted to be, I wanted to goof around, and like, I didn't have a, a space on the internet where I could goof around and just, um, make whatever dumb thing occurred to me and have it be okay that it was a dumb thing and, like, that it wasn't good. Um, you know, it was, it was enough that it makes you smile when you're playing it or when you're making it, and, uh, you know, this game isn't a particularly good shoot em up, but I, it made me smile when I played it, and I, enough that I actually spent a long time playing it, and um, got fairly good at it, um, to the point where I have, you know, I was with this long play up on YouTube. Um, 
That was the, that was the other thing that kind of inspired me, Glorious Train Wrecks, is there's a lot of shareware freeware games out there that will just steal stuff. Right? It's just like, that's the riff from Pink Floyd's Money. They just took it. Um, the high score... There's, a, there's an entire ACD song for the high score screen in this game. They just took it, and they're like, put it in their game, and it's like, because they had it, and it's like, well, why not? It's free, right? I'm not, you know, and so like, it, it was there for me to kind of, um, you know, it was there so that they could... Uh, and I think, you know, when we're doing, Glorious Trainwrecks had these things, Click of the Month Club, which was, you know, a very short amount of time game jam, two hour game jam. Um, oh, wow. I want to skip ahead a little bit, I think. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to the last level, because I love the last level of this game so much. So this is, the, the last level is of course the morning after, oh no, this isn't the morning after, is it? This is the second last level, here, hold on, oh, missed the Santa Claus, sorry. I just spam the extra lives. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, this is the morning after. So of course you played all these drinking themed levels. And of course the last level is kind of really brutal. Um, because like everything that shoots at you is like homes directly in. This game, the source was actually uh, released. Uh, it's an open source game if anyone wants to make a source port so it can run on modern systems. <laughs> it would be a, a valuable exercise. And yeah, this is like the majority of the run is the last level because it's hard. Cool! Um. <laughs> kid growing up, you know, playing games on my computer, this was, you know, every bit as important to me as, you know, something like, you know, <laughs> you know, these, these cultural touchstones like Mario or like, you know, Doom or Wolfenstein or whatever, you know, games that are good. <laughs> um, you know, I've spent at least as much time playing games that were not good, and they inspire me more than games that are good. Um, and, I don't know, I just, I, I, yeah, that's really all I have to say about that. Mm -hmm.